Hello, this time we're going to be looking at the Hue range of products through a home automation perspective, which means that we'll be concentrating on how to connect with the Hue bridge via its API. And we'll show some Hue products and give a quick review of them and the ones that we have here in the flat. But the vast majority of this video will be showing how to directly connect to the Hue bridge via its API. Then we'll show some applications of the Hue bridge API both third party and ones that I've developed myself in order to directly control the hue lights from our home automation system here. Okay, so without further ado, let's have a look at some of the lights. So the first one, of course, is the hue extended colour bulb. Now this bulb is the most prolific hue light because you simply plug it into your existing socket. They weren't available when they first came out in bayonet fittings for the UK market, but now they are, so that um, you don't need any specific type of um, d adapter in order to fit them. These are decorative and functional. Um, they have, as, as you can see in this image, they are for, they are more downlight um, than, uh, uh, than around. Therefore, certain types of lampshades, you may find difficulty in lighting up the whole of the lampshade because it's it, kind of points most of the light energy downwards. However, these lights give exceptionally good colour, exceptionally good whites, and they are very bright. Similar to the standard hue bulbs, here are some GU10s, which are down lighters. These are very focused downward facing lights. They are larger than standard halogen bulbs, however they can fit into existing IP44 enclosures and they respond with the same speed and in the same colours as normal hue bulbs. This is a, an LED strip. It's the second generation of LED strip, usually called um, it's usually called Light Strip Plus now. And um, again, it's a decorative but functional light. It gives exceptionally bright and good quality whites, and it's capable of rendering all the colours and also all temperatures of whites. And the reason it does that is because it's advanced on from the first version of the LED, which only used s um, single clusters of LEDs. This uses, um, along the strip, two different clusters of LEDs so that it mixes the bright colours with the white LEDs, which are in a separate cluster, and they are available in pure icy white all the way through to warm white. So they mix those colours together, those two different types of LEDs, in order to give a more representative light. There are a plethora of other devices, including bulbs that produce white light rather than colour, a Hugo, which is a rechargeable um, and portable light, the Bloom and Iris, which are decorative lights, and the Beyond range, which is a premium version of the Hue range developed by Philips. So I just thought I'd give you a quick lowdown on how the hue, hue lights actually communicate with each other. They use a protocol called ZigBee, which is a networking protocol. And as you can see in this diagram here, the hue bridge sends out signals to the hue bulbs which are available to it. And then those bulbs further on the signal going, going forth, so it creates a network. And therefore that's how the uh, lights actually communicate with each other and the bridge. Um, if the bridge is contacting one of the uh, lights on the outskirts there, then the lights that it has available to it will then forward on those commands. As you can see in the lower left of the screen, there is a bulb there which is too far away from the bridge, and you might get that uh, occasionally in larger homes or homes with thick walls. And um, in order to solve that, all you need to do um, is add in a new Zigbee product in between those two places if you can. It doesn't have to be a hue bulb, it can be um, any sort of Zigbee product because it as long as it uses that protocol, it can boost on the signal. For any home control system to talk to the Hue bridge, you need to activate yourself as a user um, and identify yourself that you're going to be using the API. And for that, you go to the developers.metu.com website and register yourself with your username and password as a developer. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have to produce an app or anything. You can just use it for home use. Um, I've been a re I've been a uh, what's called a developer for two years, but I've only ever developed for my own system. 
and what you do is you go to the getting started page and follow the instructions in there it's really straightforward and you give yourself a username it suggested um, as a default that the username f would be my, um, would be new developer so that's the username that I've used and you'll see that coming through when I show you what, how to communicate with the bridge when you've actually registered so follow these steps and then we'll go through what we can do with the API you then go to the clip a API debugger by typing in the address of your bridge followed by forward slash debug forward slash clip dot html and you end up with an interface like this which is the debugger which is um, generated from the bridge itself so you know that you've um, you've accessed the correct um, location because you'll see this come up on your browser uh, the first thing to do is to change this standard 1234 with your username that you've registered as I said before mine is new developer and then the first thing that you can try is I'm going to put in lights and can click get and what happens there is that at the bottom of the screen in the command response you'll see a long list or short list depending on how many br how many lights you've got attached to your bridge of what is going on with each individual light um, the lights are numbered um, and they're numbered automatically um, uh, in the order in which you've attached them to the bridge via usually using the app and in each individual light description you'll see that there are various uh, bits of information for example whether the light is on what brightness level it's, it, it is it would be at if it was on what the hue uh, number is again the hue number is a, an integer from zero meaning pure red to uh, some, a number that's over 65,000 um, and then you've got sat which is saturation again that goes up to 254 255 I believe we've got effect here which I'll go into um, again effects um, cannot be activated at the moment by the hue um, app and therefore it's it's useful to, to be able to, to know to, to use how to use the API in order to um, gen generate these effects because they can be useful for alerts etc in your home control system there's also another v uh, version of the what light um, is is going to be emitted from the bulb, which is called XY, and again CT, which is color temperature. There is alert, which is again um, something useful for a home control system, and again you cannot uh, activate that from the Hue app at the moment. Uh, what color mode is currently in use, and whether it's reachable, which is useful, it tells you whether or not it's within that Zigbee mesh that I was talking about earlier, and whether or not it can be it can be found. The type shows exactly what type of uh, product it is. The name comes down here, which is the actual name that you've given it, um, and the model, and the manufacturer name, etc., and some other other uh, information here, including software version, etc. So let's do an easy one first from here. We're going to set the um, state of a light and I'm going to turn it on. You can put into the message body what you would normally send through an API call and you can use obviously um, whichever method that you want when you've finally found that you've got the correct string in here you can add that to um, your favorite method of sending API calls so um, I'll show you a few of those later but for now we're going to type it straight into here and um, can communicate with the bridge via by here so what I'm going to send in the message body on equals true to switch hopefully switch the light on and press put and then lo and behold the light has come on and you get a command response saying that it was successful if we wanted more control over that particular light then I would put more um, put more uh, variables in here so for example I can set the brightness I'm going to set the brightness to maximum I'm going to set the saturation to maximum and I'm going to set the hue to um, sorry I'm going to set the hue to color red if I put that then you'll see again you get a command response saying that this command has been successful and then that light has now gone red but for home control um, and home automation it's usually more important to switch on a group of lights or to change the scene of a group of lights so in order to do that instead of it being um, in the lights section it's actually in the groups section so groups I'm going to use my room which is group 4 happens to be group 4 in here and for this one instead of state you put action because it's a, a group action and if I sent this as the message body all of the lights would switch on and be bright red so if I do that now the whole um, of my room has just gone bright red 
Um, apart from my desk lamp, which is one of the whites, the Hue whites, and um, the f that b bulb has responded with as much of it as it could do, it, which is, in other words is the on is true and the brightness is 255, so that's come on as bright white. So the whole room is now lit up in um, a very bright red, apart from that light that is only, is only capable of uh, producing white light. So again, we can do, we can switch off the whole group by putting on equals false. Uh, like that and we can also use scenes as well and we can capture scenes we can find out which scenes we want to use so for example if let's just activate a scene in here first so I'm going to put the scene being scene number four uh, which is called four in here all, all the different scenes are listed if you wanted to see them you go to new developer stroke scenes and because we want it to provide us with information, we don't need to give it any message body, and we want it to we want to click get. So you click get, and then after a few seconds, all of the scenes will appear down below. If I can get them, there we go. And um, there's a long, long list of scenes. Now, what happens is the Hue Bridge stores all of the scenes, and in fact, the bulbs store the scenes themselves. Um, so I believe. And there is a very fine, there is a finite number of scenes which can be stored within the um, Hue Bridge and bulbs. However, I've not hit the maximum at all, and I've got loads and loads in here. Some of them, um, I have no idea what they are. They've just been generated by the uh, by the uh, the Hue uh, Bridge itself, uh, and other ones I've created. So, in other words, you can see that if if there is a, a scene with a name that is understandable, then it's usually one that I've created. It gives a list of the lights that are involved in that scene, and um, Again, we've got something here called recycle equals true and locked equals false. That means that if the bridge becomes um, low on memory and it can't store any more scenes, then I think what happens is it flicks through all of the current scenes that it's got in its memory, finds the ones that haven't been used for the longest time, and then overwrites that scene which hasn't been used as much um, and um, puts in the new scene that's saved over the top of it. So this is how you would control the uh, hue lights from the directly from the API. So let's have a look at different methods in which, in uh, in the ways that you can send these API commands through your um, home control system. Here are some examples of how I would implement sending the API commands through uh, HTML. So these are used on my web apps that I use to control the flat with and um, the web apps obviously are available on mobile, they're available on static tablets that are around the flat and they're also um, available externally if you know what the what the external address is. And um, as you can see here, um, just as we were using the, uh, the clip uh, API debugger, you can see uh, the same strings appearing in here. However, this one, for example, is a function to control a whole group. And you see here that um, I have a function for it so that I can always specify later on in the scripts that I want to control a specific group, a specific hue, brightness and saturation. Um, because the group control is being called the function, then I'm assuming that that group needs to be on. So that is a given. I just put on equals tr on, on is true, and then I just add in the uh, variables into those um, into those particular slots. And notice here that I've just used um, an execute uh, command, and, and I've put that to the bridge address. So to do exactly the same things from the Raspberry Pi and therefore from um, any sort of self-contained home automation system that you have, I send uh, the messages to the bridge via curl. So I use this standard and um, in here, in this text, you see that it says on is false and it is group zero. So this means switch all the all the lights off. You do get a response saying that, that it has been successful. This This is a HTML. Uh, programmed web app that I'm currently working on which contains all the rooms in the flat and it can also be infinitely scalable so that um, you can use it on your mobile etc. Um, it looks slightly different to the last interface that I showed on my fabulous home automation blog um, however if people have read my blog they will know that I'm constantly striving for a, a, a good user interface and I'm never really happy with it so I have been developing this in the background so this 
I'm just showing you this so that you can get to grips with how I control the hue. For example, this there's a pop-up under here. If I click here, we get a pop-up and you can choose the different light scenes um, for the living room because this is for the living room panel. And if you click any one of these, then what happens is that a specific API um, call is made so that the group is set and the um, particular scene that I've already saved is recalled. Well, there are plenty of applications uh, available that use the Hue API that I've described previously in this video. Um, here are some that HueHomeLighting.com recommend. Um, there's things like Hue Disco, which responds to the microphone in your um, iOS or Android device and changes the lights accordingly. There's Ambify, which analyzes the music and can control the hue lights based on what it thinks um, the music sounds like. There are loads of other ones as well. Um, I would, exp I would um, recommend that you just Google and explore which types um, are suitable for you. There's also, of course, the um, Amazon Echo, which can also control your Philips Hue, and that ex that uses exactly the same API. Alexa, turn on the TV light strip. OK. Another example which may not be suitable for everybody because it is quite niche is a program that I've developed called Hue Sync, which is available to download on the blog. And this looks at what is currently playing on the Sonos player and syncs up the lights to um, light cues that you've previously saved for that particular song um, so that the lights change in time to the song. So you have much more um, control over what the lights are actually doing at certain parts of the song. So if that sounds interesting to you, then pop over to my blog and have a look at that. So there we have it. This shows how the Hue API can be used to directly control your lights through the bridge. I hope that's given you some inspiration on how maybe you can integrate that into your own home control software and your own homebrew setup. Please let me know how um, you get on in the comments. If you haven't subscribed already, I'd really appreciate it if you did. And I'll see you next time.